Hi, this is Dr. Eric Westman with another edition of Ask Adapt. Today's Ask Adapt is about, is all protein created equal? Well, this is a great question and because we usually focus on carbohydrates and fats, um, it's about time we talk about protein. It turns out that protein is the most important type of food to eat. You know, if you're so appetite suppressed or your appetite's normal that you don't want to eat much, then you should eat protein. Protein comes first. Um, but is all protein created equal? You know, protein gets digested into amino acids. And amino acids are the building blocks of many different uh, uh, tissues and, and uh, uh, cells in our body. I don't think it really matters which type of protein carries the, the amino acids. So it's less um, important if it's fish, chicken, beef, and all that. You just want to be sure that there's a certain quantity of the amino acids that we need to eat. There are some that our bodies make just fine. They're called the non-essential amino acids. And then there are some that we can't make and we have to eat them. They're called the essential amino acids. So in the big picture, it doesn't matter to me if someone eats meat, poultry, fish and shellfish, or eggs as the main source of their protein. Now the questions Tracy asks, what about whey protein? Well, you know, I prefer that you stay to real food as sources of protein and uh, whey protein, say, in shakes and things like that, um, are not going to give you all of the vitamins and minerals to digest uh, or metabolize the protein. So at first I, I would limit uh, the amount of whey protein or, or not have it at all until people get in the pattern of eating regular food as the source of protein. Um, Heidi asks, when you eat more protein than fat, does that convert to glucose or pull us out of ketosis? Well, this is a common issue that I'm seeing now where people are taught through the lens of the new keto macronutrient counting, um, every meal has to have proteins and fats. I don't think that's the case. Um, what's not being talked about is the contribution of your body fat to the fat uh, percentage. So if you're losing weight, that means you're burning your body fat and you're not going to have to add fat to your protein to keep the ratios right, okay? So, but if you're trying to achieve a ketone level that uh, is carefully monitored and, and like for epilepsy or some other treatment, a uh, ketogenic diet for epilepsy would have you be careful about every meal having that sort of ratio. So there's a confusion between the ketogenic diet for epilepsy and the keto diet for general health. You don't have to be that careful if you're just using the ketogenic diet for general health or for diabetes or obesity. Roxy asks, I'm 5'1", uh, I know I need 50 to 65 grams of protein per day. Will I gain weight if I have that? Uh, if I have more than that, are there digestion issues? And well, you know, I have to say that we don't really know exactly how much protein you need. This gets to another question by, from Linda. How much protein do you need to lose weight, to maintain weight or to exercise? Is there a difference? We know in general terms that about a gram to a gram and a half of protein per kilogram lean body mass is, we think, the healthiest amount. Even when you're losing weight, you might need a little more for exercise, but in the program that I do, which is an uncomplicated approach, I don't really have people measure that. And the studies have shown that you'll basically eat as much protein as you need as long as you have free access to the proteins and you're not eating the sugars and the starches. Uh, so I don't really prescribe a certain amount of protein. I let you eat until you're comfortably full from a list of foods that are full of protein. Uh, Madlock asks, uh, Maddock asks, are protein requirements different for men and women? And what are they? Well, uh, again, there are prescribed uh, amounts that you can read about. My approach is to not worry about that and let the per certain individual match their own protein need through their own appetite and urge 
to eat. Um, and George says, is the type of protein important, like fish or meat? And, you know, again, it gets to that idea of as long as it's a complete source of the essential amino acids, meaning the amino acids that our bodies can't make, I don't think it matters if it's fish or meat or chicken or eggs uh, or even tofu or other sources of, of uh, complete amino acids. Um, now, it does have different effects on other types of metabolism. For example, you can manipulate the protein sources and change the cholesterol levels, for example. But even then, I don't know that that's really important for metabolic health in the context of a keto or low-carb, high-fat diet. I hope that's helpful. Please subscribe down below. Leave your comments and questions. Until the next time.